Hi, I'm Ayala Slotem, and in this video, I will present my joint work with Sarah, Patrick, and Aviv, suggesting a new mechanism to extend deadlines of time-dependent contracts in cases where congestion occurs. Many smart contract applications, such as payment channels, auctions, and voting systems, often involve a mechanism in which some party must respond to a challenge or appeal some auction within a fixed time limit. For example, in the case of auctions, a bid must be received before the end of the auction in order to be considered valid. Another example is in payment channels, where two parties can lock money in the channel between them and then make off-chain payments. They exchange signed transactions with their updated balance and can settle the funds by sending the latest transaction on-chain. If one party sends an old transaction on-chain, the other party has a limited interval of time to dispute the division of funds by submitting a proof of a more up-to-date transaction on-chain. A major weakness of such deadlines is that in cases where the blockchain is congested, users that submit transactions will not have them included in blocks in time. In fact, several attacks and failures can be attributed directly to this weakness. For example, in a previous research, Harris and Zarr present an attack where the attacker forces many victims at once to flood the blockchain with claims for their funds. The resulted congestion allows the attacker to steal the funds that cannot be claimed before the deadline. Another example is a well-known congestion-related failure, which took place on Crypto Black Thursday when the price of Ethereum dropped by more than 50% in less than 24 hours. This led to a panic sale of coins and increased congestion. This triggered many maker DAO auctions to liquidate collateral, and due to the inability of many bidders to send transactions and participate, tokens were purchased at almost no cost. This was leveraged by one user to gain $8.3 million worth of ETH. In an attempt to avoid these situations, participants take wider safety margins, which increases their costs. They often overpay fees for transactions with deadlines and set long deadlines in advance, which delays the processing and settlement of the relevant smart contract. We expect congested period to become increasingly more common due to the well-known scalability issues of blockchains. Therefore, a better solution to these situations is required. In our work, we present a mechanism aimed at solving these issues. We propose to set short deadlines that are automatically extended if congestion occurs. We define a protocol that can detect congestion and use it to extend the deadlines until the congestion passes. We begin with formalizing the problem, starting with the notion of challenge response protocols. A challenge response protocol is an implementation of a pattern in which some party must respond to a challenge within a fixed time limit. The previous examples of auctions and payment channels use implementations of challenge response protocols. This pattern consists of a challenge that takes effect at time TC and a response deadline TRD, which is the latest time by which response to the challenge will be accepted. We call the time period between these the challenge window. Responding to the challenge during the challenge window yields different results compared to responding after the deadline. The protocol we propose inspects the challenge window period and extends it by extending TRD as long as the blockchain stays congested. This allows us to begin with a shorter deadline and use lower fees for the transactions. We want to define what it means for a block to be congested and then use this definition to define congestion of periods on the blockchain. We start with defining a block as a final set of transactions. Each transaction has a weight, which corresponds to its size, and a fee density that the owner is willing to pay miners so they will insert the transaction to their block on-chain. That is, the total fee paid is their product. We also define the total weight of transactions in a block with fee density above theta and the maximum block size beta. For simplicity, we will treat every block as full, since we can always fill a block artificially with transactions with a fee of zero. Now, we can suggest one possible definition for block congestion. Given a fee density theta and a fraction gamma, 
the block will be considered theta gamma congested if at least a gamma fraction of its size is filled with transactions of phi density above theta. In this definition, we use the price of entering a transaction to the blockchain as a reliable signal for congestion. There are more ways in which you can define block congestion. For example, later on we will implement our protocol using Ethereum Improvement Proposal's base fee as a measure of block congestion. We want congestion signals to be reliable and to reflect the true state of the network, so we must consider that miners are the ones who decide on which transactions to include in the blocks and therefore are able to manipulate blocks congestion signals. For example, when a miner mines a block, they can choose to include dummy transactions that move money between their accounts and pay fees to themselves, making the fees appear different than they are to be. However, such manipulations cost in losing the potential fees from available transactions. In the paper, we compute this loss. Also, miners are limited by their computational power. They can't manipulate any block at any time. In this work, we denote the computational power of an adversary by alpha, which means that each block has a probability alpha to be mined by the adversary and one minus alpha to be mined by others. We need a few more definitions before we can move to define congestion over periods on the blockchain. A period is a non-empty sequence of consecutive blocks in the blockchain. A congestion vector of the period consists of the congestion signals of its blocks. Now, we would like to define what it means for a period to be uncongested, meaning it is considered not congested, relying on the definition that we picked for block congestion. Intuitively, a period will be uncongested if some threshold of blocks in it is not congested. We define an uncongestion period protocol as a function that takes as input a binary series representing the congestion signal of the blocks in the examined time period. It will return 0 if the period is congested and 1 otherwise. This function can furthermore be extended to also provide information such as a proof of uncongestion in the relevant case. We wish to find an efficient protocol that can provide a compact and easy to verify proof. Before we propose different protocols, we examine what properties we would like the protocol to maintain. The first one is monotonicity, which says that if a period is considered uncongested under a certain protocol, then any extension of this period will also be considered uncongested. A monotone protocol is easier to verify as the prover only needs to select a portion of blocks from the time period in order to prove uncongestion. Furthermore, a monotone protocol is more secure in the meaning that the prover can go offline and prove uncongestion when they come back online by choosing any uncongested period from the time they were offline. Now, if we go back to the illustration of challenge response protocols, since we are granting extensions to deadlines of congested periods, we can start in advance with a shorter deadline. Now, let's say that a response was submitted after this deadline, then monotonicity allows us to examine the period between the beginning of the challenge and the entry of the response on-chain and ensures that if this period was congested, then any sub-period was also congested. Hence, extensions were granted and the response will be considered valid. Another property we wish to have is robustness against manipulation attacks. We previously saw that miners can manipulate blocks congestion signals. Let's formalize this attack. We consider an adversary with alpha computational power, meaning each block has a probability alpha to be controlled by him. Now, we make a simplifying assumption that the blockchain is p-congested, meaning that blocks are congested independently with probability p. This means that a congestion vector of a period p is chosen at random has a binomial distribution. This is not the situation in reality. In reality, congestion is often changing and is usually correlated when considering several consecutive blocks, but we leave more complex models of congestion for future work. With this assumption, we can now study two types of attacks. The first is a congestion attack, 
in which the adversary tries to manipulate a given period into a congested period, and the second is an uncongested attack, in which it does the opposite. We will examine the robustness of protocols to both attacks for a period chosen at random in a P-congested blockchain. We will assume P is close to zero in the congestion attack, which means most blocks are uncongested, and P close to one in the uncongested attack. All this allows us to formally define the robustness property of a protocol. We measure the protocol's robustness by the adversary's probability of winning each of the attacks. That is, given the information regarding the adversary's computational power, the congestion state of the blockchain, and the period length, we will want the adversary's probability to win each attack to be smaller than some threshold Q. We note that the two attacks may differ in their consequences. While the congestion attack can cause a delay in the response deadline, that is, the deadline might be extended even if it is not really needed, the uncongestion attack might lead participants to miss the chance to respond on time, as the deadline will not be extended even if the network is congested. The damage in each case depends on the particular use case. For example, in the case of payment channels, not responding on time is more severe and may lead to financial losses. We strive to achieve a high level of security for both types of attack. The last property we want to achieve is efficiency. First, we want the evidence needed to prove in congestion of a period to be as concise as possible. Then, when we extend the period from P1 to P2, in order to check P2 for congestion, we don't want to recheck every block in P1, but rather aggregate this information. We want the extra information needed to be kept when checking the congestion signal of a period that has already been extended to be as concise as possible. Now that we have defined the basic terms and the properties we want our protocol to hold, we can propose different protocols. We assume we have already decided on a definition for single block congestion. So for example, if we look at a period PE of size N, we can decide for each block whether it is congested or not. We colored in red the congested ones and in green the uncongested. Now given this binary series, we want to decide whether the period is uncongested. A naive suggestion might be to define a period to be uncongested if it has at least m blocks that are not congested in it, for some constant m. Such protocol is monotonic, but is not sufficiently robust to the attacks we presented previously. If we wait long enough, the probability of the adversary to control m blocks becomes very high, even if he has little computational power. In another protocol, we consider the percentage of blocks that are not congested. This improves the robustness, but is not monotonic. That's a problem, since, for example, we might have a period in which all blocks are uncongested during the first part of the period, and congestion begins in the second part. Then we might get that the beginning of the period would be considered uncongested, while the whole period may not. This means that although there was a fair chance to respond to the challenge, the period will still be extended. We suggest a third protocol, which defines uncongestion by the existence of L consecutive uncongested blocks for some constant L. This protocol is monotonic, but is it also sufficiently robust? We compute the robustness of this protocol, starting with the uncongestion attack. We want to compute the probability for an adversary to achieve L consecutive uncongested blocks in a period of size n chosen at random from a p-congested network. This means we have n blocks that without the intervention of our adversary, each is congested with probability p. In addition, the miner has a probability alpha to control a block. We can view this as the following random walk of n steps, and we want to compute the probability of the adversary to end up in the last state, which corresponds for reaching l consecutive and congested blocks. In the paper, we define the corresponding transition matrix and compute the probability. We do the same to the opposite attack of manipulating a period to be congested. Now that we have the probabilities of the attacker's success in each of the attacks, we can examine the robustness of the protocol for different values of L. In this figure, 
we assume an attacker with 33% of the computational power trying to manipulate a period of one day. Note that since congestion may cause period extension, we need to find a value for L that gives protection also for longer periods, up to the maximum extension we are willing to provide. The red curve corresponds to the congestion attack and the blue curve to the uncongestion attack. The results show that there is no value L that gives a probability of success less than 1% for both attacks. Therefore, we find this protocol not sufficiently secure. We propose a new protocol that generalizes the L consecutive blocks protocol and allows for longer observation windows with a relaxed condition for uncongestion. The sliding window protocol defines uncongestion by the existence of n consecutive blocks with k uncongested blocks among them. It is monotonic and we will now show that it is more resilient to the attacks. We computed upper bounds on the probabilities of the attacker's success in each of the attacks. For a period of size n, we define probabilistic events for each of the n minus capital N plus 1 different sliding windows and used probabilistic bounds to receive upper bounds. We computed the robustness of the protocol for one day to one hour sliding windows. We allowed periods to be extended up to two weeks, a reasonable time for congestion to pass. This figure presents the results, that is, upper bounds on the probabilities of an attacker to win each attack over Ethereum. We started with a period of one day that can be extended up to two weeks by maximum. We use the sliding window of one day and set k to be half of n. The figure presents the two upper bounds, one for each attack, for the different possible period lengths. For the protocol to be considered secure, we need low values in both curves for the different period lengths. That's because periods might be extended, and we want the extended periods to be secure against attacks as well. The probabilities in the graph are extremely low, showing the protocol to be very secure. Note that the blue curve is not horizontal, it is just that its values are smaller than 10 to the power of minus 323. We also stress that these are only upper bounds and that the actual probabilities are much lower. This table presents the probabilities for smaller sliding windows. The wider the sliding window is, the greater the protection. We provide examples of n and k values and the lower bounds on the level of protection they provide, but these are configurable and subject to the user's discretion. One can choose to increase the level of protection from one attack at the expense of the other, or to set a larger initial period length to increase the protection. We showed that the protocol is monotonic and robust. Now let's talk about the efficiency. We recall that we want a concise as possible proof for uncongestion of a period. In this protocol, it is enough to point to a specific window that contains k uncongested blocks in it. We also want the extra information needed to be kept when checking the congestion signal of a period that has already been extended to be as concise as possible. In this case, it is enough to check windows that overlap new blocks in the extended period. We provide an implementation in Solidity of the sliding window protocol as an Ethereum smart contract using the EAP base fee to determine block congestion. EAP implements a base fee that is adjusted up and down by the protocol according to how congested the network is. The Ethereum virtual machine supports fetching the base fee of the highest block. We suggest extending this to fetch the base fee of any block and to add an opt-code that checks whether a block is congested. This opt-code will receive as inputs a block and a maximum base fee chosen by a user and will return whether the maximum base fee exceeds the block's base fee. To summarize, we tackle the problem that arises when challenge response protocols face congested periods. We propose to set short deadlines that are automatically extended if congestion occurs. We formalize the problem and propose a new protocol called the sliding window as a solution. The protocol defines a reliable way to detect congested periods by looking at data available on-chain, which is then used to extend the challenge response deadline when congestion occurs. We studied the security of the protocol for different parameters, and our results showed that it is possible to decrease the time settlement 
of challenge response protocols significantly while expanding the security of the protocol to deal with cases of congestion. And at last, we provided an implementation of the sliding window protocol as an Ethereum smart contract using the EIP base fee to determine block congestion. That's all. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. Feel free to contact us if you have any comments or questions.